this is Coach Marina Young, lifestyle entrepreneur and certified professional coach. And you are listening to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I believe it takes a mindset shift to take you to the next level in your career, your finances, relationships, health and fitness, or happiness. So, your journey to manifesting your goals and desires starts now. Transform your mind to transform your life. Welcome to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and in the guest chair today is Nicole Worth. Nicole is a um, uh, lifestyle um, uh, mindset coach and speaker, and um, we are going to be talking today on COVID-19 and a healthy lifestyle. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, excited to be here. <laughs> yes, I forgot to ask you before the show started how to say your name. So did, I, did I pronounce it right? Is that Yeah, worth? it's worth, like, worth it. Worth it. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, say so that all right. All right, well, welcome. Um, I am going to enjoy our conversation today because I um, love your picture, love the energy that you um, bring to your work, so loving all that. So let me give you a little bit more information about Nicole. As I mentioned, Nicole is a coach, author, and speaker who shows women how to be BFFs with their bodies. So that every time they look in the mirror, they say, damn, I rock. Because, she says, when a woman sees how her badass, her body really is, she creates the life and the body she's always wanted without force or willpower. I love that. She knows that this is true because it's happened to her and thousands of her clients. When she's not um, fearlessly but lovingly pushing her clients into a a lifestyle they deserve. You can find her laughing with friends, connecting with nature, and loving up on her hobby, I mean her hubby, their son Wyatt, and two dogs. And she also hails from Denver, Colorado. So I am sure that nature and mountains is definitely a way to be happy. I would mm-hmm. trade places with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. I dream of the mountains, even though I'm in Florida and I like the beaches too, so you can't have it for <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I usually like to start off the show by um, uh, getting kind of a background of, of my guests, and I'm very curious to to find out your journey into being passionate about healthy living and lifestyle. So how did your journey begin? Yeah, so I wasn't healthy growing up at all. I was raised on hamburger helper and mac and cheese and, you know, like just the basics of kind of nourishing your body uh, was not something that was taught. And so I, I got out of high school and I gained some weight and I did what most women do, thought I needed to do, is like I started dieting. And I wouldn't say that I had like big time body image issues or self-esteem issues going into that whole experience. But after every diet that I did, I started to realize at the end that with each diet, it took out a chunk of my self-esteem. And so Hmm. after years of dieting, if you would have looked at my body, you would have thought, damn, she's got it going on. She's so fit. She's so healthy. I want her body. You know, like I'd be like inspiration to so many people. But in all reality, even though I looked really healthy, I was an absolute mess inside. I had disordered eating and disordered exercising, and I was so lost in it. I didn't even see it. Um, I was I was obsessed with what I was going to eat and what I couldn't eat and strategizing. It was all strategy all the time. Any time I would be living my life, there would be some sort of strategy around food or exercise or, you know, shit-talking my body. It was completely consuming. And, you know, and I was still deeply unhappy because before then, I blamed all my unhappiness and the reason why I don't have a boyfriend and the reason why I don't have a fulfilling job and the reason why I don't have fill-in-the-blank 
was because of my body, right? It's very common for women to blame everything on their body. And so now that I had lost the weight and I looked fit and healthy, I no longer had anything to blame my unhappiness on. And so, again, even though you would look at me and you'd think, wow, she's an inspiration, this happened, and this is happening a lot in especially the Instagram space as we see these people and we think, oh, they're so inspiring, I'm going to follow them. They're posting pictures of their food and them working out and the pictures of their abs all the time. I'm going to follow them because they're going to, make, they're going to inspire me, right, to change. But honestly, most of those people were just like me. They're so lost in disordered eating and disordered mm. exercising. They don't even see it. And they're broken. I mean, but that's how diet culture works. Diet culture intentionally breaks you breaks your trust with yourself, so then you need a diet all the time. That's how I was for years. It's like I didn't trust myself without the guidelines, right, without the rules, without the restrictions. And right. so, yeah, I, was, I went through that whole journey. I lost the weight, and I was worse than I had before I started that journey. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, yeah, that's kind of how, hmm. like, so then I started moving into – like exploring, okay, how can I find happiness and freedom and health at the same time? Because dieting does not get you happiness and freedom. It feels very caged, really. Uh, and so that's where the philosophy of Wildly Alive started coming up and this idea that your body is a living, breathing, feeling thing, just like a plant. So if I went into my office every day and looked at my plants and said, you're ugly and you're not good enough and you need to try harder. <laughs> and I just sent negative energy to them, right? They would right, struggle right. to survive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where most women are is they look at their body as just this thing that's hanging on them that's never right and will never be right. And they're constantly abusing it. If you want to call it abuse or not, it really is because you probably would never mm -hmm. talk to your best friend that way or even your enemy. And, um, and then I started really looking into instead of creating change from a place of shame, which diet culture teaches, if you just hate your body enough, then you can change it, shifting that to respect-based change. So learning how to respect our body as we are changing and reshaping it. Okay. Um, that was a great intro, to, and I, I think I understand because, yeah, food plays a very important um, part in our, our, our body image, and, and, you know, women in particular, um, or maybe men, maybe men drink, women eat, but I'm not sure. But um, uh, a lot of times if you have emotional problems, you know, it, 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 it shows up in what you eat. And then, yeah, when you go to the gym and you have a really nice body, that's on the outside. You're correct that, um, you know, you, you mentioned something that's, that's probably a lot of women that are listening might be, be thinking the same thing. Yeah, you know, if you were overweight and um, you buckled down and, and um, now you look hot, you go to the gym every day and, you, and you know, you look healthy or whatever and you're right, like, where's the boyfriend? You know, uh, that was supposed to be the, the, the character at the end of the stick and where is it right now? So that's a, that's a good thing to think of because, um, uh, and I like your statement where you said that you're changing not from shame, um, but you're changing, you know, you want to change your body from the inside. And when that happens, then whether the boyfriend comes or not, then you are still going to be happy. So I, I like that. But um, a circle back question, um, you were saying that you weren't really, um, uh, you weren't really fat but you felt that you needed to get a better body. Um, where did you first start thinking that, um, that you need to get a better body even though you weren't fat? Where did that come from? Well, well I mean, I did gain weight. Um, okay. When I got out of high school, I gained all kinds of weight. I had the biggest okay. body I've ever had. And so, okay. I mean, I don't want to – I don't, I don't want to sit here and, like, compare my body to others, and I'm sure some people would look at my body at that time and be like, you're not fat compared to me. But okay. for me, it was right. my biggest body I had ever had. Get you. And so right. it was a far away from my, like, what they call your, your set point, your body set okay. point. So okay. I did gain all kinds of weight at the end of high school because I was, 
in the eating. service industry, right. and I was eating a lot of jalapeno mayonnaise and french fries. It was like my mm-hmm. favorite combination and Big Mac. <laughs> and so, yeah, I did gain some weight, and that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what triggered me into exploring losing weight and dieting. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, hey, it's a per- personal reference, so that's great. Now, um, uh, one of the great things about this conversation at this moment in history is the fact that um, uh, the whole the whole world globally we're looking at um, the coronavirus and and uh, COVID nineteen, and um, everybody is you know all the health experts are now on talking about a healthy lifestyle because. Um, uh, what we're all now acutely aware of is that if you have a healthy immune system, then you can normally, you can probably um, uh, get over the illness of the coronavirus. So um, when you're doing your programs, um, why do you think that um, we are thinking now of a healthy lifestyle, seeing that we're all um, looking at sickness and death, you know, as the, as the, as the as the extreme for not being healthy. How would you comment on that? How would I comment on what the extreme? Sorry, say that again. Yeah. So, how would you comment on where we are right now with COVID nineteen and a healthy mm-hmm. living? Um, how how do you measure? How do you um, combine mm-hmm. the two and make sense out of it? Hmm. Um, like how fast it's spreading or what how people right. are feeling about it or, or what do you what do you mean exactly yeah well what I mean is that people are now conscious of healthy living so um, right. uh, how how can you you know in your program when you're talking about mm-hmm. healthy lifestyle and, and, and being wildly alive right we're gonna get mm-hmm. to that later in the section but um, I just want to have like a um, like a bridge between COVID-19 pandemic and healthy living, mm-hmm. and as a yeah, health coach, okay. what would you say? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you like what I'm I'm telling my clients right now. Right. And first and foremost, and this is this is the basis of wildly alive is your mind is the most powerful muscle in your body. And so just again, like with dieting, is like when you if you would have looked at my diet at that time and what I was eating, and you were looking at, um, yeah, the foods that I was putting in my body, you would think I have a really healthy diet. But around food was this constant feeling of stress. I was constantly stressed. I was afraid of butter. I was afraid of red meat. (laughs) And so even though, according to my little like calorie counting notebook, I was eating all of the right things, because I was so stressed over the food, it was making it unhealthy, essentially. It was doing the opposite, obsessing over being right was making it wrong, essentially. And so, you know, like what I, what I am really emphasizing with my clients right now is we need to meet you. We need to figure out where your mind is at. We need okay. to get you into a place of feeling safe, of feeling calm, of feeling trusting, and processing through any emotions that are coming up for you right now. It's very okay for you to feel scared right now. So you need to validate those feelings for yourself. You need to put your hand on your belly and put your hand on your heart and say to yourself, it's okay that you're scared. Like we're in a national crisis. This is totally new. It's okay. It's okay to feel scared and allow yourself to really, or or like feel angry, right? Like that's very possible. You're losing out on work or you're not able to go on to your, you know, niece's graduation or missing out on weddings. You're allowed to be pissed right? You're allowed (laughs) to feel your feelings. And so if we can give ourselves space, if that is journaling, if it's screaming into a pillow, if it is turning up the music really loud and like scream and sing and dance around your living room like a crazy lady and like let yourself express how you're feeling, which is going to be a roller coaster right now. I know for me, for sure. It's like one day I'm like, or even just one moment, I'm like, okay, I'm going to find the lessons. I'm going to, like, open myself up to this space. And then the next minute, I'm like, ah, I can't handle this. You know, I'm stuck in a house with a toddler. And so, like, you know, you have, to, you have to allow the roller coaster, and you can't judge the roller coaster. And you just need to say over and over again to yourself, it's okay that you're feeling this way. Your feelings are valid. Because if we can kind of, like, you know, like, 
the um, hierarchy of needs, we need at, at the base of everything, we need to make sure that we feel safe, that we feel heard, that we feel accepted. And yes, like that our water and food needs are met and our shelter is met. All of those things need to be in place before you start talking about meditation and having your green juice and all of those yeah. things, right? Yeah. And so I think I'm always like coming back to them. It's like, how are you feeling right now? And let's talk about that. Because if you're feeling safe and you're feeling accepting of your feelings, then you will naturally, automatically, subconsciously make healthier decisions. You'll take a bath instead of having three glasses of wine, right? You'll start to gravitate towards the healthy behavior that we all know we should do, right? We all know what we should be doing. We're just not doing it. It's because we need to make sure that the mindset and our body and our emotions are feeling safe. So then all of those other things that we know we should be doing actually just start to manifest themselves. Yeah, that's good. As you were talking, I also realized, too, that we're talking here about food and we're talking about eating, we're talking about exercising. And what's happening right now that people are home, they can't go to the gym I, you know, I walked every day in the park. They closed the park. I was extremely pissed about that and thinking, how is that hurting anybody? Anyway, mm-hmm. so um, they closed the park. And, yeah, people in our home, <laughs> I saw this post on Facebook. This guy was talking about um, he's ordering in pizza for breakfast. You're right. People are not eating healthy. They're, they're all stressed. And when you're stressed, you eat. Right. And like um, you heard you say, you know, um, yeah, instead of instead of going to the, the, the bath or something, you have glasses of wine, which is basically what your whole, um, uh, you know, what your um, your your work is about. Your work is about healthy lifestyle. And yes, you know, we're on the Transform Your Mind show. The mind is very important for everything, whether it's your body, whether it's you know, your relationships, whether it's your career, um, you're right, meditation, all those different things. And people and people are scared. And when they're scared, they eat. And, and now you can't exercise. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to just, you know, um, uh, you know, combine those two things together. What's going on in the world with COVID-19 and the pandemic and healthy living and healthy eating and things like that. So um, it's a good intro. Um, uh, you know, when we uh, we're gonna take a break now, and when we come back in the second segment, um, we're gonna you know dive deeper into ways that um, uh, you know Nicole, Nicole teaches with or without the pandemic and uh, not being able to go into the gym, how um, how we can you know embrace the healthy lifestyle, and um, uh, you know it's a little challenging at the moment. But, you know, what we don't want people to do is after this is over, head back into, you know, if they had bad habits before. So um, we're trying to, you know, talk about setting a lifestyle. Lifestyle is something that goes on regardless of what, you know, because, you know, like a runner. I mean, I've, you know, I've heard about, you know, the runners that run in, in the middle of winter because that's their lifestyle. And if they don't do it, then they feel badly. You know, and the other people, you know, wouldn't go out if it's like, I don't know, 50 degrees cold. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, and there's people running in minus, you know, 20 degree weather because they have to do it because it's their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right. So um, uh, let's take our first break. Um, uh, keep it locked. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the feminine approach to a healthy body and lifestyle. We'll be right back. MyTaxLadyMiami.com wants to help you get your stimulus check. The IRS has released their new web tool to update your info in their systems for your stimulus payment. If you have already filed your return, you don't need to do anything. If you didn't file yet, Download the My Tax Lady Miami app now and let's get your refund and your stimulus payment. If you know someone who doesn't usually have to file a tax return, like the elderly, disabled, or very low income individuals, and want to receive their stimulus payment, send them the link available on the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us, or have them visit mytaxladymiami.com or have them contact 
My Tax Lady Miami to file a simple return ASAP. Payments started being sent out mid-April. That website again is MyTaxLadyMiami.com, which is M-Y-T-A-X-L-A-D-Y-M-I-A-M-I.com. Also, follow MyTaxLadyMiami.com on all social media platforms, hashtag at MyTaxLadyMiami. Do you need a loan or rent an apartment, but you don't have a credit score? Do you have a credit score, but it's low? I would like to tell you about an amazing free service offered by Kickoff. K-I-K-O-F-F. They build credit for free. No interest, no fee, no credit pull, no bank account or credit card required. Their customers who had zero credit were able to get a 600 plus credit score in 30 days. Kickoff is an official member of all three major consumer credit bureaus and will establish your credit history with all of them. It is a mission driven company backed by social impact investors. Credit building should be free and now it is. Build your credit and receive free credit scores at Kickoff's website today. That's Kickoff without the C. So, K-I-K-O-F-F dot com. That website again is K-I-K-O-F-F dot com. Innovative Kickstarter campaign aims to enable the next generation to make smarter career choices. CareerDiscovery.net is an AR-based 3D printed collectible that works in tandem with a smartphone app. It's the first of its kind. This device is designed to emulate confusion and provide clarity in selecting the right career path for students. So students can invest their time and resources in the right courses and land better jobs. One of the most exciting pieces of our pilot space program is the Space Explorer figurine. We're giving this program to Kickstarter backers at a much discounted rate. This futuristic Space Explorer is scannable and activates the space module in our augmented reality app. Check out this game-changing space explorer on our campaign page, www.kickstarter.com. That is K-I-C-K-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com. CanisBeverages.com is family-owned small business that specializes in promoting a healthy lifestyle. Our flagship product is the hibiscus tea. The tea comes in various flavors including cinnamon, strawberry, pineapple, classic, and mango. Hibiscus tea is packed with antioxidants and it helps with regulating blood pressure, lowers your blood fat levels, and also help fight bacteria. In this age of the coronavirus, have a sip of tea loaded with antioxidants to promote a healthy body. Visit us today at www.canisbeverages.com. That is C A N I S. B E V E R A G E S dot com. Canis Beverages. You are what you drink. Having computer problems? 
Let KMaya get your PC or Mac issues resolved. We specialize in quick and reliable remote repair services. We can log on remotely and get your computer back up and running or fix any issue you have in no time. And we are available 24 seven. Visit us online at www.kmayainc.com remote to book your appointment online or call us today at 409-444-3012. KMaya, tech made simple. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I'm your host, Life Coach Marnie Young, and in the guest chair today is Nicole Worth. Nicole is a coach, author, and speaker, and we are talking today on COVID-19 and a healthy lifestyle, whether during the pandemic or after. So in the first segment, um, Nicole gave us, you know, her background and her story, and we talked about the fact that, um, you know, she started gaining weight, and that's basically where her um, motivation for dieting came from. But as she lost the weight, then uh, she recognized that she was changing because of shame, and um, she wanted to create change from the inside and not um, uh, from uh, body image. So that's basically the foundation for her work. And um, I like the way, you know, what she said about even though that she was eating the right foods, it was all stressful. Like, you know, she didn't want to eat butter, didn't want to eat red meat, um, and it wasn't calm. One of my favorite um, analogies is um, I was reading something about um, Portia, which is Ellen DeGeneres' wife, and she was talking, I think she was interviewing, and she was talking about the same thing when she was obsessed with food. She would say she would eat a yogurt a day, and when she ate that yogurt, she would run around the parking lot because she wanted to to get rid of those calories. So Mm -hmm. that is someone that was just obsessed about body image, and obviously um, uh, your mind is not right if you know, you, you're that obsessed with it. So, which is basically mm-hmm. a conversation today with Nicole. But Nicole's work centers on the feminine approach to a healthy body and lifestyle. So, Nicole, you want to expand on that and, um, uh, you know, tell, tell our listeners what is the feminine approach to a healthy body? And the word lifestyle means that it's something that you do regardless, you know, day in, day out, right? So, mm-hmm. you want to... Right. That. right. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of like we were saying in the first segment is this is a respect based approach. So if I can help show you how awesome your body is and how it's doing so many things right in this moment, then what will start to happen is you'll start to recognize that your body is always talking to you, right? She's always speaking to you. She can guide you on the best things to eat and the best ways to move and how to thrive in this whole self-care thing. You don't need a plan. You don't need somebody telling you what to eat and how to exercise and what to do to feel happy. Your body can tell you all of that. But again, we live in this Western society that just cuts you off at the head and makes you think that all your body is is something you manipulate. That's all, you, that's all it is. It's just this dead thing. It has no voice. It has no wisdom. And so when we can start opening up the lines of communication, and a really good example of this is like when you get a cut, right? When you get a cut, You don't have to look at the cut and be like, okay, white blood cells, come on in and start forming a scab and clean. You know, like, you don't have to do any of that. Your body is already on it. And it has, like, millions and billions of processes that it's going through on a regular basis. It is so smart that we can't even conceptualize and wrap our mind around all the brilliance of our body. And so if I can teach you some of that. And I can show you how awesome your body is and how she is here to guide you. She's here to guide your self-care, but she's also here to guide you on those life choices that you're really, really confused about. If you leave the toxic marriage or not, if you find another career, like she can help guide you to those answers. And so what would happen is you start to create a relationship with her. 
you start to realize, wow, she's more than I ever gave her credit. She's pretty damn cool. So now (laughs) I want to care for her. So for example, this is happening to me now, is my face is breaking out. And instead of me going into shame, which again, which is what diet culture teaches is like, just hate your body, just hate your body into change, hate your zits enough to force you to buy the skincare, right? To cover it up, right, right, right. Right, Mm -hmm. exactly. Looking at it differently. I look in the mirror and I say, okay, my body's talking to me. She's telling me something right now. The zits on my cheek is stress. (laughs) And then the zits on my eyebrows, for me and my body, I know that that is too much dairy. I've been having mm. too much dairy. And so then instead of so are you, um, yeah. are you are you um, in the house all the time eating cheese? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh, yeah, cheese, milk, all that stuff, yogurt. Okay, all right. mm-hmm. So, you know, like, to, again, like one approach that most women take is, uh, okay, fine, I have to stop eating the dairy, you know, oh, uh, you know, I need, I, need a, I need to get better cover-up or whatever, like shame-based. And flipping that on its head and saying, okay, okay, my body's stressed. Again, like putting my hand on my belly, putting my hand on my heart, taking a deep breath, telling her she's safe and everything's okay in this moment, doing more stress management from a place of compassion if that's meditation or going for a walk, you know, or doing yoga or just lying on the floor and breathing. Or staring at the mountains. <laughs> right. <laughs> staring at the mountains. <laughs> and, and then it's like the dairy, you know, like, again, like, say, say we're making tacos or something that night and there's like a side of cheese that you could put on your tacos. From a shame-based place is, no, 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 you can't have that. You can't have that. You're breaking out, right? It's very like wagging your finger in your face, shame-based. <laughs> shifting that conversation and saying, okay, my body, who I'm starting to realize is pretty cool, she's telling me that when I have too much dairy, there's an inflammation response. I break out. Mm -hmm. And so because she's so great and because she's talking to me, I'm going to choose to have very little or none of this dairy. It is a choice I am making. I am making an empowered choice. I am not yelling at myself to make a decision. It's an empowered choice. Okay. So does that, yeah. does, so you can kind of see the, the difference um, in that sense. And, and the other way that this approach is really feminine is, so our 28 day cycle, if you're menstruating or not, okay, as women, mm-hmm. we have a 28 day cycle and that 28 day cycle mirrors the moon and the moon's 28-day cycle. And there's four phases within our 28-day cycle and also within the moon cycle. And those four phases also mirror the four, um, the four seasons of the planet. So, for example, just to make this really simplified, your bleeding phase is the new moon, is the winter time. Okay, so if you really think about it, it makes sense. The new moon is the dark moon. It's completely black. Also in the winter, right, there's not a lot of sunlight. And also when we're having our period, we tend to be more hibernate We're not as extroverted. This is our introverted time. This is the time when we reflect and we restore. This is our winter time. So, again, if you're ever confused, you just look at the seasons. The new moon is just like the winter time. So when you're bleeding – doing a high-intense workout is probably not the best thing for your body. Right. And again, if you're on hormonal birth control or you're not having your period, you just start tracking the moon and your body will start syncing up with it. Okay. So, um, so then, vice versa, the full moon, right, is ovulation, is the summer phase. So, you know, that ovulation phase, that full moon, you know, the full moon we all know is kind of crazy hyper energy. Again, there's lots of growth. There's lots of expansion. There's lots of extroverted energy. And so this is a really good time in terms of movement that like doing that HIIT workout or doing that new salsa, you know, high intense salsa class or something. That's a really good time for you to do um, more high energy exercise. 
And so this is why typical exercise programs that are designed Monday through Sunday are not designed for a woman's body. They're better for a man's body because a man's body is on a 24-hour hormonal cycle and a woman's is on a 28-day cycle. Wow. So those seven-day schedules really work mm-hmm. well. Yeah, work well for a man. I mean, they go through all four phases in a day. Hmm. But we are a lot more spread out. And so, again, forcing your body to do a HIIT workout, something super high intense because that's what's on your schedule, right? You're going against the natural cues of your body because I think if we're all, like, really honest, when we are heavily bleeding, jumping around is not something we're really excited about doing, right? It comes from a place of willpower, and so, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot with these four seasons that I could talk about, but this is the most simplified way in terms of exercise. But there's a lot of ways to, like, organize your life around it, organize your eating around it, and, and your exercise. But more than anything, it gives women permission to rest. And I think that's the biggest thing because we live in a society that is obsessed with productivity, wanting us to be in spring and summer phase 24-7. We need to be mm-hmm. producing, producing, moving, going, 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 going all the time. Yeah. Well, and some women has- um, are always in that because they're like, you know, single moms and they're the breadwinner and they've got two jobs and you're right, they don't rest. So it's a good mm-hmm. way to, and they, those women probably don't exercise either because they don't have the time. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm digging what you're saying. I'm liking it. Yeah, 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 it's really it's really exciting. And what yeah. I think is so empowering because, again, like I was the epitome of a great dieter. I mean, you would give me a diet and I would thrive. I mean, I <laughs> had all the willpower. You obviously have a good willpower, so that's good. Yeah. Because diet is and all I, about willpower, right? Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. but that's the thing is I thought it was a positive. I thought it was like an attribute of like I yeah. have a lot of willpower. Yeah. But in all honesty, it's a default because mm. I forced so many things to happen in my life that were not meant to happen. And it caused a lot of struggle and stress in my life. It's, it's against the flow of life. The natural flow of life is cyclical. It has points of surrender, has points of rest. The great mother earth Mm -hmm. can't even be in spring and summer, her entire season, right? Her Mm -hmm. entire lifetime. She needs, she needs the winter. She needs the fall and the winter to thrive. And that's why I think this is so important for women to understand is it's okay for you to have time through your self-care journey where you want to sit in bed and read a book or watch TV. Like, that's okay. You don't have to feel guilty about that. We need rest. We need days where we just go on a walk for a workout. We need days where we don't work out at all. And, yeah. you know, we live in a masculine world, and diet culture is very masculine. It's all just about, like, you eat these things every single day. Like, this is what you do. And it, when you really learn about the cycle of the human body and how especially a woman's body cycles the way that it does in these four seasons every month, you realize how diet culture is completely wrong and why so many people try to diet and it doesn't work is because it goes against the natural flow of the body yeah well you know you're you're you're, um uh, you're opening up my eyes as we're having a conversation on a lot of a couple of things you know right now i am listening to this book called the long the longevity paradox with dr stephen gundry and i'm learning so many things about that and one of the things I want to mention is, you know, just like you talking about our bodies, what our bodies can do, and the fact that we would not even think about all the processes and things that's going on in our, in our bodies right now. What happens? What is your immune system response to just like you talk about if you get a cut or something? Our body is, um, is meant to do all these different things. And, and a long time ago, I knew that uh, the full moon has something to do with the women's, um, you know, cycle because we're all 70% water and the full moon affects the, um, the tides and things like that. But I never actually looked at it from your point of view there just now um, mm-hmm. about the, the, the ovulation cycles and the bleeding cycles and, and mm-hmm. the rest cycles and things like that. So, again, whenever I talk to my, um, uh, my guests on the show, it's like going to school because I, you know, I learn something every day. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also, I ha- I'm going through right now the same thing about, you know, 
Yeah, I like beer. I don't drink a lot of it. Maybe, you know, three, four times a week or something or, you know, so, but I do like beer. And as a woman, it's usually, you know, whatever. So I always say to myself, I like beer. And now listening to the longevity, um, uh, the longevity paradox, um, you know, Dr. Gundry was talking about the, you know, the gut and, the, and how everything starts in the gut. And he was talking about the fact that um, there's certain foods that break down your barrier and lets things in and you become, you have a leaky gut. And one of the items was barley. And I immediately recognized mm-hmm. that, <laughs> that, you know, that I think that I'm not sure, but I have to research this. Um, it was one of my things on my on my on my to do list today. Research to see if there's any beers that are made without barley. But now I'm going to make the conscious decision that if you know I'm not going to drink beer any longer because I don't want to have a leaky gut and I don't want to you know and and that makes sense to me without even going deeper because you can tell when somebody has a beer belly. They have a big old fat belly because of all the beer that they've been drinking. So now I understand why. It is because it, um, it it makes you have a leaky gut. So I'm understanding what you're saying about um, you know that when you have a pimple that um, you're breaking out because you're eating too much diary and you make a choice to mm-hmm. um, to cut down on that. Um, you know, some people will say, hey, you know what? I like cheese. Or I know we're going to talk about you know you know one of our favorite people in the end of the show. But I can remember this person saying, I like bread. (laughs) And we all know that bread is bad for you. (laughs) But some people just like bread and they'll eat lots and lots of it. And there's, you know, you know, I was, I was buying whole wheat bread and I understand whole wheat bread is just as bad because it's got all the, you know, the stuff from the grains in it. So bread in the whole is bad. So, but anyway, so I understand what you're saying, that you make a choice, you make a choice and it's not a stress choice, it's a conscious choice. And it's a choice because, you know, um, there's people that are comfortable being overweight and they're not going to change. But if you want to have a healthy body and you want to be healthy, um, then you're going to make a different choice. And, 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 and that's really good. So I'm glad that you, 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 you brought our attention to the growth cycle, and actually Dr. Gunder is talking also the same thing, that we are, you know, when we're constantly eating all the time and we're in a 365-day growth cycle, that's when all the problems happen because our body are supposed to grow and regress. So, again, you're touching on some good points about, um, uh, about growth and rest and regression. And, yeah, we're giving women the, the, the opportunity to say, you know, yeah, I mean, um, uh, when I'm getting my period, I'm going to rest for seven days. You know, this is my regression phase. I'm going to rest or maybe, you know, go and don't go to the gym and I'm just going to, you know, um, and when I'm in the ovulation stage, then uh, maybe I'm going to be high energy and do all these things. And that's probably going to help me if I'm trying to get pregnant. It's going to help me because I'm active and I'm doing all these different things and I'm happy and I'm bonding with nature. All those things help when you um, uh, want to, you know, pro- procreate. So good, um, good intro to that. So, um, so how does your widely allied self-care program fit into that analogy? Yeah, like the feminine approach you're talking? No, you've got, uh, you've got um, wildly alive self-care coaching program. That's what your website says. And you, 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 you say that you have a self-care coaching program. So does that fit into this same uh, um, rhythm cycle thing mm-hmm. and the feminine approach? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. A lot of what we've just been talking about today with the respect and things mm-hmm. like that. And just to go back to your point of like beer and bread, the, the way that you really trigger the shame-based change is by telling yourself you can't have those things. And you're a bad person if you have those things, right? So, again, just to flip this on the head a little bit and think about it from a respect-based change uh, standpoint. So, like, I I always tell my clients, I would never tell you you can't eat things ever. Unless you have an allergy to something, that's a whole different conversation. But um, telling yourself, 
I can't eat bread because this study says that bread is bad for you. I don't think that's enough to really shift into respect-based change. So how you could shift into respect-based change is, say you're eating a lot of bread. We've got to give that example because I'm a huge believer in moderation. I think a right. little bit of everything is okay. Right. You know, like right. if you're going to have the bread or if you're going to have the beer, just really <laughs> sit and enjoy it, you right. know, and right. just like right. – one or two beers a week, I mean, I don't think is going to cause a leaky gut. And if you really enjoy it and it feels like a treat to you and you really like it just feels very like a gift, then I, I think you should continue doing it. But if your body starts to, again, say to you that, uh, that you know, I'm starting to feel bloated every time I drink, like for, I like beer too, I do, but every time I can have like, almost a whole beer. I mean, cool. if I drink a whole beer, then my gut like gets, I just like get really mm. like full. Like mm. my, I just feel like, okay. and so even though I like the taste of beer, yeah, me my too. body <laughs> has made it pretty clear that right. beer, like I could maybe have one, I could have a half of one and I have to really mm. enjoy that half. And that's kind of my tolerance. Right. Beer. Okay. And it's like, it's the same thing with bread is like, maybe mm -hmm. you, maybe you realize that there's a certain amount of bread that you can have that won't trigger any sort of visceral response. And so there's like, you're just recognizing your tolerance to it. And so maybe it's like a piece of bread every few days or something like that. Right. Um, I know for me, I have to watch gluten and like kind of take a tally of like, if I ate mm. a bowl of cereal that day, do I really need to be having pasta that night? Right? Like, right, I need right, to be right. aware of like my... Well, you're, 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 you're a conscious eater, you know, but some right. people um, don't have the willpower to stop. You know, I hear people telling me all the time, I can't stop with the chips. I can't stop with the bread, you know, right. you know, well, some I'm people can't using... stop with the beer. I mean, uh, right. you know, I'm always a moderation person. I don't have an eating disorder, but I'm just talking about regular. But I know what I've decided to do, um, this same study talked about how red wine is good for your gut. So when I just think that I want to have, a, you know, a beer, maybe I'll have some red wine. And that's basically how I'm doing it. I'm not, like, addicted to it or anything like that. But, yeah, I right. like the taste of it. And if I go right. out or you're right, once a week or maybe on a Friday night, which is my night to relax, maybe I'll have a beer. But, <laughs> but right. I'm, right. I'm exactly. consciously going to be aware now that, um, uh, you know, if, if the, you know the, the health that I want to be in, then um, beer is bad for them. Beer is going to be – beer with barley, by the way. I don't know if they're all made with barley, but, you know, I think that they all are. I still have to research that. But, but I, I was just making a point about – um, if you know that something is bad, once you're aware of it, there's, there's a statement that says once your, your brain is expanded with knowledge, it can't go back. Now, I can drink all the beer that I want and didn't think that anything was wrong with it. But now that I know, <laughs> mm -hmm. now that I know that barley goes through my gut walls and, you know, and whatever, then I'm conscious of it. And if I decide to, to drink it, is because I don't care, right? So I get you. Right. Well, yeah, I think educating yourself on what foods can do to the human body will help you shift into respect-based change. Right. And I want right. to make it clear. I don't, I don't use willpower to stop eating. I use respect. Okay. When I know I have communicated with my body enough to where, you know, it's just like finding a partner. It takes a while to open up those lines of communication. But I realize that there is a certain threshold with certain things. It's like Oreos. As funny as this sounds, my husband loves Oreos. I can have two Oreos. If I have that third <laughs> Oreo, I feel terrible. So I've learned that lesson, right? And I'm like, okay. And so I don't is that stop guilt? myself at Why do you feel terrible? Is it guilt? <laughs> no, I physically don't feel good. My stomach starts to oh, hurt. Oh, okay. And so, again, that's my body talking to me. That's saying, okay, yeah. we have reached our threshold with sugar. <laughs> so stop at two. And so You've I got a good body. Most bodies don't talk to them like that. <laughs> no, they do. Right. They really do. I promise you they do. But we have not been taught to listen to, to listen. our bodies. Our bodies yeah. are always yeah. talking to us. Yours okay. too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
All right. Now, before we go on our second break, I want to ask you again. We want to get back to the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus because that's what everybody's mind is on and one of the reasons I wanted to have you on at this particular time. Um, so we're talking about self-care and, um, uh, you know, the coronavirus. Um, the coronavirus, you know, you can catch it from anyone, but you recover better if you're healthier or if you're, you've got a, a, a good immune system. So give us some tips. You know, we're talking specifically to women now. Give us some tips that women can use to stay healthy from flus because it comes around every year. Do you have any, so, any of those eye days like that, right? Oh, from flus? Well, the coronavirus is a flu. It's just a bad one. Right. But we, get, we have right. a flu season every year. So mm -hmm. what are some self-care mm -hmm. tips that women can do um, uh, to, to strengthen their immune system then? That's probably yeah. a better way. Right? Yeah. Okay. So like I had said before, your mind is the most powerful muscle in your body. So make sure that you are giving yourself permission to feel your feelings. Just you, very easy thing to do is put your hand on your body and just say, hi how are you feeling? <laughs> and then, you know, usually what will happen is you will get a response. Your mind will say something and that is your body's response because you intuitively know how your body is feeling. You just have to be willing to open up the lines of communication and ask her. And then like journal or meditate or talk it out with a friend or cry or scream or do what you need to do, but validate those feelings because any advice that I give you right now in terms of the mechanics of being healthy is not going, you're not going to do any of them if you are in fight, flight, or freeze mode. Mm. Right? True. Right. So, so yeah, some things that, that we are, that I'm doing with my family here is I'm trying to keep the energy light in our house. I'm trying to limit media, limit the news, mm. have a lot of sunlight, right? Sunlight, getting outside, yeah. connecting with nature, being in nature boosts your immune system. <laughs> yeah. Being like, and, and I also love to bring nature into my house. I have lots of plants. Mm. I have salt lamps. I have stones. Nice. And, you know, like just bringing nature in. I also like that helps. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It helps as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, we try to do some sort of movement on some sort of a kind of regular basis if that's going out for a walk and letting Wyatt a four-year-old ride his bike, or okay. we do yoga together, um, something, again, that's going to help calm our nervous system right now. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't think this is the best time to be doing, like, super high-intense workouts. Now, don't get me wrong, like... The gyms are closed, so you're, the only thing you have to do is run. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, you know, like, the YouTube workouts or whatever. Oh, right, um, right, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and so, again, like, some of that is okay if you're feeling, like, in a good emotional place. You feel mm -hmm. like you want to just move through some stress, but you, you have been mm -hmm. sleeping well. But if you haven't mm -hmm. been sleeping well and your anxiety is really high and you're really nervous and scared, then you need to do a more nurturing way of moving, like walking, mm -hmm. like yoga, like polite, mm -hmm. something that's going to slow you down and connect with your body. Um, you know, drinking a lot of water, obviously that is always there. Um, increasing vitamin C. We've been having, I've been making this lemon ginger juice, like in a blender, mm -hmm. take a whole lemon. I mean, I cut it up into fourths. I put it into the blender with a piece of ginger peeled and I use 34 ounces of water and I blend it up and it's like this lemon ginger yummy, very nice. refreshing drink just to kind of, because right. just like lemon is a cleaning agent in your cleaning products. It also cleanses your system. Okay. So, um, so yeah, and obviously just trying to like, we're cooking more meals. The fact is, is that most people are eating a lot healthier now than yeah. normally because where even if you make the exact same meal, even if it is like a super heavy like lasagna or something, it's going to be a hell of a lot better for you if you make it at home than when you go to a restaurant. So connecting with yourself back in the kitchen and with food and foods that are from earth, like just really, I really see this time as like coming back to the basics, you know, with life and back to connection, back to community, back to mother earth, back to our bodies back to eating the ways that, that our bodies are really designed to eat. I'm not saying it's easy getting back to the basics, but 
I'm trying to stay open to the lessons that this time has to offer us as while I'm also dealing with the real deep desire for my kid to go back to school, you know, like it's a very, it is very up and down, but um, I think staying open to the lessons right now and what you're grateful for right now, as hard as that could be in some moments, like, why are you grateful for this pandemic? What are you learning? How are you growing? How are you becoming a better person because of it? Want access to learning tools that will help you improve your life? Visit www.loyaldetermined.com. Loyal Determined offers online dating courses for both women and men, which are easy to follow and will help you improve your existing relationship or assist you in making your next relationship succeed. Loyal Determined also offers online math courses for students who want to sharpen their skills in courses like Algebra and Algebra 2 in an engaging and effective way. Loyal Determined is also constantly offering awesome new online courses to help improve your life. So be sure to check their website frequently. Visit www.loyaldetermined.com today. Ladies, if you're looking for premium luxury hair extensions and products, take a moment and check out myminghair.com. Ming Hair is your number one premium virgin hair company for quality Indian and Brazilian hair, lace wigs, magnetic lashes, and custom hair and beauty accessories. We want you to look and feel your best, so we offer a wide array of styles, lengths, custom colors, bundle deals, and much more. We believe in customer satisfaction, which is why you earn rewards in every purchase. You will not be disappointed. Our hair is bouncy, luxurious, long-lasting, and stylish. Visit myminghair.com today and receive 20% off your first order and get exclusive access to order promotions. We look forward to making you a long-lasting customer with Ming Hair. That is M-Y-M-I-N-G-H-A-I-R dot com. Need rocket fuel for your immune system? Whether you have a healthy lifestyle or not, No one escapes the consequences of cellular breakdown. Think of your body as the most complex communication network that exists. Every second of every day, your cells are passing tremendous amounts of information from cell to cell and throughout every system of your body. Any breakdown in this vital communication and you cannot achieve your full health or healing potential. Your body will be like a house on fire and you can't call the fire department because you have no cell signal. So you watch your home go up in flames. This is what ASEA Redox signal, signal in Supplement does. We have the only technology in the world that can increase this critical cell signaling throughout your body. ASEA Redox Signal and Supplement has been clinically proven to boost your immune system to optimum levels. For more information, go to www.iceuhealthy.ca. That is I S E E U H E A L T H Y dot C A. Are you looking to increase your sales on eBay or Amazon? Why not learn from the professionals? Come learn the tips and tools by sellers for sellers on e-commerce. Join us on July the 17th and 18th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Register today at www.midwestecom.com and use promo code Amazon to save $50 off your registration. Also, follow us on social media with hashtag pound Midwest Ecom 20. 
That is M-I-D-W-E-S-T-E-C-O-M-20. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life Radio Hour and Podcast. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and in the guest chair today is Nicole Worth. And we are talking on COVID-19 and how to create a wildly alive, healthy lifestyle. We're almost out of time, but I did want to ask Nicole um, this very controversial question. I read somewhere that you were disappointed with Oprah. Um, Now, Oprah was the person I was speaking about earlier that said that she loves bread and she can't stop eating bread. But I know from having our conversation Mm -hmm. that you don't shame anybody. So tell us, Mm -hmm. why exactly are you disappointed with Oprah? Yeah, okay. So I just want to, like, give some, like, preface that I love Oprah. I love her in so many different ways. As a woman, as a woman of color, like, she is breaking the mold. And I love her for so many reasons. And so a few weeks ago, I was watching an interview with her and Lady Gaga. And she Mm. was on stage, and they were talking about mental health, and I loved it. I was like, yes, I love this conversation. They're talking about mental health. This is such an important part of health, right, Mm that's often overlooked. People just talk about diet and exercise. And so then I was seeing these WWs everywhere. And I'm like, what is this WW? Like, I'm really out of Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers something. Yes, it was Weight Watchers. And I was so devastated in that moment because Weight Watchers is diet culture. It's the epitome of diet culture. I mean, the former CFO of Weight Watchers has said that they bank – on you failing. 84% Mm. of their profits is from you going back. And Mm. um, they were having this beautiful conversation about mental health. And calorie counting, which is Weight Watchers, has been proven to be mentally unhealthy. It Mm. drives you to a point of obsession and stress and um, does not do healthy things for your mind, um, as we've been kind of talking about. And, yeah. you know, the biggest, and it's interesting because I talk about this on my platform and people are very quick to defend Weight Watchers, which I think is, you know, interesting and I understand it because, again, like the science behind calories in, calories out is, is arguable, but we don't take into consideration people's mental health when you're counting right. calories and how there is. But it doesn't last. The Minis- it yeah, doesn't last, some- right. Yeah. No, not at all. And there's something called the Minnesota Starvation Project or – study if you ever want to really dive into calorie counting and how it is so incredibly unhealthy for the body um you could look 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 that up anywhere really minnesota starvation study Hmm. and so anyway i was really i was so sad you know like i i'm i again i still love oprah i know she's a human i know she's flawed i forgive her no, but, it's business. You know, like, it's it's business. She got on right. Weight Watchers because, in fact, she just she bought the company maybe one or two years or you know things go fast. But I remember when she bought the company, and they're saying that right away just because she was part of the company, then the stocks went up ten percent or something. Mm-hmm. And um, everybody knows that you know Oprah has a problem keeping weight off. So yep. it's the perfect match for her. But it's it's all business. <laughs> Right. Yes, yes, yep. yes. I, yep. I, I do see that. I just, yep. I hope that one day she is exposed to something like Wildly Alive and she learns this very respectful way of creating change in the body because it's totally possible and it's very spiritual, which is what she is all about. And calorie counting is the opposite of spiritual. And mm-hmm. so, like, I think, I know that she's craving this and I think that's great. There's a desire, but I hope that something like Wild the Alive comes into her peripheral and she shifts Weight Watchers to be more <laughs> intuitive based, more body based, yeah. more spiritual. More based. mental health based, as she was talking about, right? Yes, yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's very true. I agree with you um, 100% um, because um, those diets only work if you've got, like, let's say that you want to get married and you want to lose some weight or you, you want to put on your bathing suit to go someplace. It's never something, it's never a lifestyle. It's never anything that you can, you can keep going year in and year out. It's a short-term fix for a problem. And then, you know, even if you lose 15 pounds and, you know, 
six months from now you're going to put it back on. So it's it, okay. yes, you're right. It's um it's not it ever it's not a good way to it's not a good way to diet at all. And I love the word lifestyle because like I said, the lifestyle means it's something that you can once you once it's like a habit. Once you um get on with it, then or you get on to it, then it's something that's automatic. You don't even have to think about it. It's you you know, you mm-hmm. don't have to worry about counting calories, you don't have to worry about butter, you don't have to worry about this, you don't have to worry about anything because it becomes a habit. So, all right, right, excellent. So how can our listeners um, get in touch with you, tell them about your website if you have any special programs or coaching programs that you're offering? Yeah, so you can can find all stuff Wildly Alive at wildlyalive.com and I do have a new free challenge called the Embrace and Reshape Your Body Challenge that will start here in a few weeks and you could go to wildlyalive.com slash challenge or you could just go to wildlyalive.com and you'll see the free challenge tab and check that out and it's a really good opportunity for you to just dip your toe in this whole philosophy because I know that it's a different and you could a part of you could feel like wow this makes sense but then the skeptical part of your mind is like but does it really work this is a really good <laughs> challenge for you to explore the philosophies for free and see if it's a really good match for you yeah yeah i like it i like it so um you know people can try everything you know and see if it's a fit but you're right i like the idea of just dipping your toe in and see you're making a lot of sense there's nothing hard here mm-hmm. that's just makes sense in and and, and mm-hmm. going with the flow is always a better way to go and i i didn't comment on that before but yeah you talked about going with the flow of life and that's that's definitely the way to do it mm-hmm. all right so uh, we're definitely fresh out of time um want to thank you guys all for staying with us until the end I hope you learn how to be wildly alive in this climate of fear and debt and to follow your um, rhythms in life, whether you're um, uh, still having your period or not. You know, follow the, the rhythms of the moon and the seasons and, um, mm-hmm. uh, and just go with the flow. Um, I also want to remind you guys that if you like the content of the show, please show your support by subscribing to, to your favorite podcast player and posting a review on iTunes. Great reviews expand our reach and allow us to show to reach a wider audience. To get a transcript of my conversation with Nicole, head over to the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us. You will also find links there to Nicole's website, which is wildlyalive.com, and um, on all our sponsors as well. And um, uh, you also have a standing invitation to join my private Facebook group called Life Coach. We'd love to see you guys there. I want to thank Nicole for sharing her self-care tips with us today, um, opening up our mind to cycles and rhythms and um, uh, being healthy, stress-free. So I enjoyed our conversation. I learned a few things. So thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Any last words? <laughs> I think I think the last the last words would be to tell every woman who feels like she's struggling with her health and her body is that it doesn't have to be so hard. It can be easy. Yeah, yeah. Just go with the flow, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't let it be unnatural. All right. Well, um, thanks you guys all again for tuning in, and until next time, namaste.